Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Fig Life. Glad you're here. It's me, John Wangland, Johnny Podcasting here, ready to roll with some fun talk today. We got some great scores, some great finds, some great figs for everybody today. And I'm always here with my co-host, my best buddy, the one, the only, the real deal heel himself, gracing us with his presence, Mr. Richie Reardon. Richie, how are you, my good sir? I'm doing great, man. We're here to break down our figure collections, and uh, we're knocking out some episodes here tonight on the on the new YouTube sensation, Fig Life, man. So uh, definitely got some good stuff to show everybody tonight. You got that right, man. Well, let's hop right into it here because we have some good picks for everybody this week. We usually split up the stamps of approval. We'll do one on one episode for you, one for me, uh, and a separate one uh, throughout the week here. But tonight we're going to combine them here to kick it off here. So what do you got for your stamp of approval for the week, my friend? Well, stamp of approval for us is is a figure that knocks it out of the park and, and is a great uh, – a, a great representation of, of who it's made after. And, uh, you know, this one here, I have to go with the classic superstars line and it's actually from their deluxe series. Uh, and that's going to be the one, the only Kevin Nash Ooh. in his iconic outsider attire there. That was my favorite version of Nash. You know, when he first showed up on the scene, I don't know what it was about this attire, man, but it just looked like an outlaw, you know, type wrestler to me. It was so cool the way he carried himself as a badass, and he was legitimate because of his size and everything, and he was just a great character in the NWO, in my opinion. Um, you know, he, you know this, this figure is cool and everything. The one flaw I can tell you that I can see right away off the bat is Jax was known for a lot of their laziness, mm -hmm. and in their figures, uh, when they would make somebody they would basically use the same figure and just repaint it or, or redesign it, whatever, off the same mm -hmm. thing there. And the errors that they would come up with is something similar to this. And that is uh, basically they used the diesel uh, and basically repainted it into this. And the reason I can say that is Kevin Nash and the NWO never wore this leather glove on one hand. And mm -hmm. then, of course, on the other, he doesn't have it. So that's a direct error right there on that. And I, that's just me being picky because I'm a collector. Uh, the other thing here that I see that I don't like is the belt. They have the black spray paint when, of course, he was known for carrying the red spray paint. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, uh, this is a great representation of Kevin Nash. The head skin, I'll go ahead and close up there. And then, of course, we'll have the image on the side. You'll see that it, they knocked it out of the park. This is one of the best Nashes ever made, in my opinion. Uh, just, you know, with the, with the exception of those two flaws, on the back here he was part of series two, the deluxe series, and the people that joined him in this series were iconic in their own right. You had Mister Perfect in his yellow singlet attire, Bret Hart, and I believe that was when the attire when he faced Yokozuna, uh, British Bulldog, and then you had Shawn Michaels with his Texas uh, Heartbreak Kid attire there. So. Great group of guys to join him with, uh, all Hall of Famers in their own right. And you look on the back here, you got his stats, and I'll go ahead and read some of them. His titles that he held was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion and the Tag Team Champions with Scott Hall. Uh, you know, he was also an Intercontinental Champion in WWE and a WWF Champion as well. Uh, his finishing move, the Jackknife Powerbomb, he was 6'11 and weighed in at 329 pounds. And he debuted in 1990. That's a beaut, man. I actually, it's, I I have a bid going out for that right now. Actually, that one. That's why I, was, I think it's awesome because I love that one too, man. I got a bid going out for that one. I hope I win this week too. That was another one I forgot to mention when we taped uh, what we're looking for there. That's another one. I love it, man. That's a beaut. When, I agree. When with you're you. collecting, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I agree with you on the details, though, like the attention to detail with the gloves and and everything. No. But that's just us being nitpicky. Yeah, absolutely. When you, when you're collecting NWO figures and you and you get that collection going on, this is definitely an essential for that man. I, they they did a great job on everything else but those two details there. So yep, that's a beaut, man. I love it that one though, man. That, that's that's really why it good... gets the stamp of approval. Hey, I'm with you on that one here. Well, I found one. I picked this up a few weeks ago, and. While the box leaves a lot to be desired in regards to the way I like it. It's what it is on that sometimes when you pick up and you get a good deal on them. And this is one I haven't seen a lot of figures on this uh, on this one here. There's not a ton. There's a few. 
but more old school stuff and then more of the new schools. Not a ton of stuff out there. And he really was an icon in many ways just due to his weird gimmick and stuff. And he recently passed away a few years ago. But I picked up the Elite Hall of Fame collection and I picked up the George the Animal Steel. Oh, man. Yeah. This is his best figure it by is. far. Hands down. That's why it's my stamp of approval, man. Hands down on this one. Um, it gets it. The details on this one, man, they just knocked it out of the park once again. And just this one really just looks tremendous. It, it's got a great design for it, man. And they, they just did a fantastic job on it. You can see he would carry that stuffed teddy bear looking thing around with him all the time. And it's right in his arms on this one, as I'm pointing to right here, just so you can see. And yep. it looks exactly like the one he would carry around with him, too, which is even more funny. And then mm -hmm. he also has in this the roses. Um, they were like yellow roses that he would carry along. And that had to do with the Miss Elizabeth feud um, from WrestleMania yeah. 3. Uh, not WrestleMania 3. I mean, I think it was WrestleMania 2 or something like that um, when he took on Macho Man. And he was that was kind of like one of his big angles there. And it was the Beauty and the Beast type story that they're running off and he gave her flowers and the Macho Man didn't like it and all that stuff. You know, we all thought it was his gimmick, but really it's how he was in real life from what everybody said, too. And George and him had that feud. He'd eat the turnbuckle, all that crazy stuff with George the Animal Steel. And uh, this they just banged it out, man. It was a beautiful figure that they got in this series right here. They have a Diesel one. They have a Jake the Snake Roberts and they have a Rowdy Rowdy Piper run. Uh, which I would love to get all those. I don't own any of the, the other ones on there. And that's what the back looks like right there. It's got the cutout of him and his stuffed animal that he would carry around with him. Um, he is a Hall of Famer, 1995, one of the first uh, Hall of Fame groups that went in. And they definitely killed it with this one. This is the best looking, most realistic looking uh, George Animal Steel figure that I've seen yet. So that is my stamp of approval for the week, Mr. Reardon. Yeah, absolutely, and and with good reason, man. The good thing about this uh, Hall of Fame series is it it became a Target exclusive, and with the Mattel elites, I'm a big fan of that because it makes the the figure hunt that much more interesting. Because mm -hmm. you got to go to different stores to get those ones. Back yep. in the day, you know, with Jack Specific, when you had the Bone Crunchers or any of those type of figures, it was all one series, and it would go out to all the different stores. This gives you a variety. You know, you have to go hunt more and all that kind of stuff. So. The Hall of Fame series, they did a great job. A lot of iconic figures, and the best touch of it, in my opinion, uh, personally, is they did the less is more approach and just had the iconic attire to, to kind of represent the figure. It, it wasn't crazy on the accessories. And the other thing that I loved about it is it gave the detail of when they were inducted in the Hall of Fame. Yep. And that's an important aspect of the figure, uh, in my opinion. What I noticed on that that I loved the most, though, they they did a great job on the detail of his hair. He was a yeah. hairy guy. Yeah, and then on top of that, there. yep. On yep. top of that, they included the green tongue, which was yep. a very vital part of his gimmick. Mm -hmm. So definitely a great stamp of approval there, man. Loved it. Yeah, it was a good one, man. It was a good pickup there. Like you said, the box is a little leaves a little bit to be desired for me, and you know because we're collectors, we like them, you know, mint when they come to us, but. For what we got it for on this run and what I picked this up for, it was totally worth it. You know, I can overlook that little part of it. It's in, you know, pretty flawless shape other than that, which is with the exception of spots that I wouldn't like. But I love the figure I saw when the person offered it to me. I was like, I'm going to go hop on that right now. Got a great deal on it. And uh, it's definitely my stamp of approval for the week. Now, let's look at our rare find right here. You have a rare find for today. What's your rare find from the the real deal, man. What's the real deal's rare find of the week? Yeah, so the rare find I picked uh, is something that everybody remembers during the Attitude Era. It was it was really the the match that set it off for everybody, uh, and the main reason why was who was involved. Mm -hmm. And of course, WrestleMania is known for their star-studded guests that they have for celebrity guests and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the time, it almost was made more about this guest and one of the participants in the match than it was uh, that guy's opponent. Uh, you know, and what I'm talking about, of course, is the Shawn Michaels versus Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, oh, with awesome. Mike, Mike Tyson as the enforcer there. Uh, and what's cool about this figure is, A, it was a WWE shop exclusive. And B, they included an accessory to uh, kind of acknowledge that that person was there. 
uh, due to the fact that they didn't have the license to make the figure. So that mm-hmm. was kind of their loophole of getting getting around that there. So uh, this was, of course, WrestleMania 14. Yep. Uh, Stone Cold versus Shawn Michaels. And the thing I love about this figure is, of course, the 316 vest there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the iconic vest is made out of a pleather material. So mm. it definitely looks, you know, the realism's there for it. Uh, the winged eagle belt is, of course, mine and, and one of your favorite belts mm-hmm. of all time. They did a great job on the detail of that figure. And the accessory I was talking about to acknowledge Mike Tyson's part, uh, I was kind of laughing off air with you about it because it was mm-hmm. funny to me. They had some black uh, boxing gloves here. Uh, you know, those of you that don't know, uh, which you probably are living under a rock if you don't, Mike <laughs> Tyson was a championship boxer, and that's kind of where he got his stardom from. Uh, but, you you know, you look at this figure here, and Shawn Michaels... I love the red attire with the attention to detail. They they put the DX over the, the broken hearts there on his tights. I think that was a nice touch, and that was one mm-hmm. of my favorite attires of his. Uh, you know, this match doesn't get a lot of love from these two. They said it was very, you know, bland and, and one of their worst performances. It's kind of funny in hindsight because it's one of the most iconic matches of all time Yeah, because that was when the Austin era began, you know. This was uh, his last match before his four-year retirement, too. Yeah, yeah, and uh, iconic in its own right, you know. You, you look here, you got a great picture of Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels. You flip it to the back, and of course you get a little description of uh, their stats and everything. Austin was 252 pounds at six foot two. His finishing move, of course, the Stone Cold Stunner. Shawn Michaels, 225 pounds at six foot one, with his finishing move, the Sweet Chin Music. And of course in this set it was classic superstars 2 pack 11 and the other ones that were in this series of course were roddy piper and mr fuji uh rob van dam and taz from ecw which i I would love to get that and here's one i'm sure is on mr wangland's uh to buy list rick the model martell versus jake the snake roberts i love that one man another example of how well sometimes uh, Jack Specific would knock it out of the park. Uh, just a great figure and an essential for anyone's classic superstars line. Yeah, that's a freaking beaut, man. I love that one right there. I love these ones that they do where they incorporate the gimmicks and stuff from a lot of the monumental moments and stuff. It, it's, a, it's a great feature that they did. And once again, just another Jack uh, Pacific one that we love. You know, I know we do a lot of classic superstar stuff on the show. It's because really, man, the whole line is just so good. Like, it really is. I don't understand the black boxing gloves, though. Yeah, I don't either. I wish they were red, to be honest with you. Um, you know, and, and the thing is, too, with the Jax line, uh, you know, I, I watched a documentary recently on wrestling figures. I kind of had uh, an explanation as to why they were able to pr- produce some of the characters in this line the way they were able to. Um, this line came at a time where WCW and ECW had both just been bought out. I mean, literally, like right when this line was being produced. Um, So Vince McMahon had owned the likeness and content to all those characters. And he didn't really, until their contracts ran out, he didn't really have to ask permission to make them. Mm -hmm. So the floodgates opened for Jax. They were in a really interesting time period uh, because they really didn't have to get permission for anybody to make them. So they pumped out these figures, and and as a result, we got some of the characters that we always dreamed of as kids to mm-hmm. get. Uh, you know, you had Harvey Wimpleman, uh, people like that. You know, you had uh, Gorilla Monsoon, which hadn't been seen ever, I don't think, in figure form. Just all kinds of guys that you just never thought you would get, but you would hope to. You know, Kona Crush was another one that is on my to-buy list, as you know. Um, so just, you know, a great line of figures, very underrated. And if you haven't got to collect any of these, you need to go out and get them because as the days go on, unfortunately, in the collecting business, uh, these figures are being opened every day more and more. So, yeah. And eventually they'll wear out, man, by somebody that doesn't take it the same way that we all do. I yeah. love that one, though, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to pick that one up soon because that, that's a badass. Uh, that's that's just a badass set there. I'm going to contribute something for my final segment, I'll say for the night is uh I got a I, I got a beaut here, man, and I owe this to you because you actually sent this to me. And this is one of my favorite pieces of, of memorabilia that I that I have now. Um, and it's something I love that you sent me. It's a great gimmick stand item for our gimmick stand segment. 
and uh, just brings a lot of nostalgia to me. And you hit a nail out of the park when you sent this to me, and uh, I couldn't thank you enough for it because it's just it's that awesome. So you gave me this, and I think everybody will love this here too. So we're going to go back to the magazine days right here, folks. And this is from the WCW magazine. This was uh, number 59. This was in the year 2000 when this came out. And Richie sent this to me a long time back there when he got me back into collecting. And I just love this one here for many reasons. This was the NWO 2000 version of it. And it was just a real down phase for WCW. They were dead in the water at this point, doing whatever they could to keep it going. This was one. Of, this was close to the end of the magazine here as well. So this is probably one of the last ones that they had, roughly, I would think. And not only did you get me the magazine, but as you see there, it's, it talks about you know the N, the NWO two thousand. Here was the people that were in it. Yeah, Jeff Jarrett. Uh, you had Scott Steiner, Kevin Nash, and Brett the Hitman Hart in it. And not only did you just get me this really cool magazine that is in mint condition. But it's signed by every single person that's on here, actually, too. So all the people that are on the cover, it's signed by from them, which is really cool and makes it worth even more right off the bat for that. And I love this item, and uh, I'm actually going to get it framed up and put in the office because I just think it's that cool, and I don't want anything to happen to it. And something I love, and I appreciate it from you. So it's just a badass one, man. Like, how can you... When you got... Hall, uh, not Hall, excuse me, when you got Nash, you got Steiner, you got Jared and Bret Hart on there, all signed on this cover. Uh, one of the last WCW magazines, you really can't beat it right there, man. So, beautiful piece. I always will appreciate this from you, Mr. Real Deal. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. That was something that I took to a convention and actually got signed by them guys. And uh, all great guys when you meet them uh, in their own in their own ways, you know. And uh, very iconic superstars from from that era. Uh, definitely carried WCW on their back in their own right. Um, yep. But I'm glad you, you value it, man. I knew you would. And uh, that, that package was a token of our friendship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed those items, man. They were, they were definitely meant for oh, that yeah. reason. So. I love them, man. And that's going, it's going to be uh, hung right up nice and good here really soon here in, in, in the studio in the office. So I love it, man. Always will appreciate that. So uh, you got anything else? You, you got to close us out tonight, my friend, with anything? Yeah, actually, I do. I, I, I got Beautiful. two things for the gimmick corner here that I can add into it. Uh, nice. Definitely happy about these two items in my collection. Uh, I'll go ahead and continue on with the NWO stuff. Uh, this is an item that I got. Um, it was dead stock on eBay, and I was very fortunate to grab this because it's very rare. You don't get to see these come on the market too often, and when you do, they're very pricey. And luckily, I didn't have to pay much for it. Um, because I had bought so much from this person, he kind of just gave me a deal, you know, for, for purchasing so much through mm -hmm. him. Uh, so I have a NWO oh, Buff Bagwell type beret or a Scott Norton or pretty much anyone in the NWO wore these. Uh, I believe Brian Adams, Kevin Nash, all those yep. guys wore this. Uh, and the cool thing about this man is it's just, it's made off of that era of wrestling and it, and it gives you that nostalgia uh, of those times of, you know, you'd see these guys come out and they were so cool with their black and white, you know, attire and they were all part of a group and, and taking over the WCW and, you know, how cool, how much cooler does it get than the NWO? And, uh, they made yeah. items like this desired by people. And, uh, that, that's more of the reason why people are buying this stuff today is just that nostalgia, you know, that's what's in and that's, what's cool to people. Uh, cool so yeah, absolutely. And I have worn this before, so, uh, you know, if anyone's wondering, did you actually wear it? Yes, I did. And I do look goofy as hell with it, so don't recommend <laughs> it. Uh, but definitely cool to look at, so. Yeah, I and, don't think and, it could make many people look cool, Richie. Yeah, absolutely. But I will say that this does rest on my Bray Wyatt head that my yeah, wife got me. I was to say that. <laughs> and I so that's a great more. place for it. Awesome. Uh, the next item for the gimmick corner, uh, this is something very interesting, actually, because I got to see this personally signed for me on a video. Uh, this is somebody who just returned on SmackDown the other day. Very cool item. His book just came out, and as you guys know, he is a mayor now, and congratulations to him mm -hmm. on that. 
And I'm talking about Glenn Jacobs, who is also Kane in the WWE. Very and this nice. is the autographed edition. The cool thing about this is it's a first edition, and I actually got to watch him on video sign it. So I thought that was a very interesting way of getting an autograph. You know, you got to see him on a webcam do it, uh, as well as you got to ask him a question, too. Um, so, cool. so, yeah, very cool. And, you know, it's a it's been a very interesting read. He includes a lot of his road stories and a lot of situations that formed his opinion in politics and stuff. Uh, you know, Kane on kayfabe and and on tv he's a very dark character Mm -hmm. and you wouldn't think that he would be into politics and stuff uh so you know reading this book and getting to know him as a person god man he he's just a stand-up guy and loves his country and would do anything in the world for his fans and i can't say enough about glenn jacobs as a person and i i appreciate this very very much that he was able to do that for his fans and sign some copies for him so good if you haven't if you haven't got it yet, it's available on audiobook, uh, so get it on there. Or if you want to get your hard copy or your or your uh, soft cover there, they're available for a very reasonable price, and it's a great read. I don't read many books, but when I do, uh, it's stuff like this that are very interesting. So definitely Beautiful, a good man. good pickup there. Yeah, that's a great pickup, man, for the gimmick stand. I love them both, man. That's that's some awesome stuff. Well, we I'll hope you guys. Oh yeah, show the okay. the yes. certificate. Of- authenticity yep. there that came with the book there i thought that was pretty cool uh Dwayne ward is the ceo of premier collectibles i guess that's the person that had this uh signing and then i will show the autograph because that's what everybody's interested in it says glenn jacobs and then it has kane in the middle which i have very many kane autographs in my collection especially in my autograph collection there because uh, he's one of my favorites he never signed it, Glenn Jacobs. Uh, so I'm very glad to have this in my collection because that's a very unique way for him to sign it. When I thought my handwriting was bad, I look at his at his cursive there. He's worse than I am. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man, because whenever he does his autographs for just the Kane persona, mm-hmm. he literally writes Kane out just in regular print. He doesn't do cursive or anything. Huh, that's awesome. Yeah, so a very, very hard way to, to authenticate that autograph. <laughs> oh, you gotta love that, man. You gotta love that. Well, great items for the gimmick stand, man. Anything else you'd like to put out there before we close out tonight, Mr. Reardon? Uh, yeah, man, I just want to let all the fans know that we appreciate everything they do for us and, and liking the videos and, and subscribing and leaving comments. Uh, we want to see your collection. Send us an email. Uh, you know, my email is always open, rickybobby112 at gmail.com. We're doing a great giveaway. If you guys help us to get 500 subscribers, you're going to be entered into a drawing, each and every one of you. Uh, So there's going to be one chance out of 500 of getting an autograph figure from my personal collection. It is signed by a current WWE superstar, a former NWA champion, who was part a big part of the Asylum years in TNA. Uh, Me and John do a retrospective show where we... Uh, do a watch along to the TNA Asylum years, and this guy was a very big part of it. So mm-hmm. uh, those of you out there that are collecting figures or collecting autographs, this is a great opportunity to get a great signed figure from a, a even better superstar. So uh, help us get those subscribers up. And, of course, when we hit the 1,000 mark, John's got some interesting giveaways himself, and I will yeah. add something along to that as well. So I yeah. uh, just want to put that out there. Also, tune in to our shows. There's going to be some great new shows out there. We're doing a uh, great show on Wrestling Anonymous for the Benoit murder-suicide. Uh, we're going to be visiting that and the new interview with David Benoit, his son. Uh, it's going to be a three-part series. It's going to be very interesting, very in detail, very in-depth, and very dark on Wrestling Anonymous, as you guys have grown to expect from that show. Uh, of course, we got Wrestling with Reality every week that we've been doing. Uh, We just did a great episode on the AEW contract that they just got an extension there. And you can find me on Rad Turtles as well, where we do the Wednesday Night War. And, of course, the flagship where we cover SmackDown and all the news topics that are going on in the wrestling world today. And also, if that's not enough for you, we got all the great watch-alongs as well on the Reality Check Podcast Network. So that we do man check it out everybody you got to make sure you like it and uh we want we want to make sure you guys like it and like everything out there so go on over enjoy if you ever got feedback let us know you can also go to the website rcpodnetwork.com it's got links to be able to email everybody get in contact with them twitter feeds 
with the rcpodnetwork.com. Mm-hmm. This week, sorry to cut you off, John. No, I no will problem. be taking pictures of some of my inventory. Uh, I know we haven't put some new stuff up there in, in just a short while. Uh, that was due to the holidays and stuff like that. I yep. just had my birthday as well, so we've kind of been busy. Uh, but we will definitely be updating the inventory. There's going to be a massive amount of figures this week added to the inventory, so go mm-hmm. check that stuff out. Yep, absolutely. It's it's a one-stop shop over there in the network. Once again, rcpodnetwork.com. It's got links to all the podcasts. It's got all the stuff um, you know, for the store and everything, too. So go check it out. I'm on Twitter, at WWR Podcast. If you'd like to go reach out over there, DMs are open. Uh, so check it out over there. Once again, my email is right through the website. It is just wwrpodcast.com at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, we really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, man, uh, Tony Schiavone said it best, as we always say to close it out. We are out of time for tonight. But have no fear. We're going to be back again this week, man. And uh, we appreciate everybody's support, all the great stuff you guys have uh, been doing to help grow it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. And keep coming back and checking out all the great episodes of Fig Life, man, because we are all Fig Life together. And when you're Fig Life, man, you're Fig Life for For life. life. Thanks, everybody.